It is staggering the amount of comments I've received over the years from vegans saying that I cannot possibly be spiritual when I'm consuming the decaying flesh of dead animals. And I find this comment so curious, really, because, you see, I was for four years a devout, militant, activist, vegan. I converted probably dozens of people to veganism. Every single day I was micromanaging my life reading the studies, listening to the vegan preachers, trying to make it work to the best of my ability, and it didn't work. It was obvious to everyone around me, but they didn't tell me because I was always one-upping them with a counter-argument to what they were saying, and I couldn't see myself in the mirror. I couldn't see how I was deteriorating. And so when I finally came to that realization or that conclusion or that admission in myself, um, what was plaguing my mind then when I had to decondition this vegan programming, this ideology from my mind, what was concerning me then was not the health effects of, of eating meat, no. It was not the fact that I had to kill animals to sustain my newfound diet, no, it was not even the potential environmental effects of animal agriculture and how I would be contributing to that. No, because I had already considered all those points of view and, and actually clarified in myself that eating meat was perhaps better in all those areas. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into that in this video, but what I want to address is, is my main concern was really this grapple with how can I be spiritual, which I fought myself to be, and eat meat <laughs> at the same time? Those two were like oil and water in my mind. Those two didn't mix. They didn't correlate in any way. And so I've received so many comments from people saying that, yeah, it's, it's not possible for you to be spiritual, honestly, and eat meat because they <clears throat> consider the karmic implications they think that yeah you are a murderer and that will have major implications they think that the the adrenaline the cortisol the death and fear energy in the meat embedded in the meat somehow that that will ruin your spiritual energy and will bring you down so to speak all this stuff that i just didn't find to be the case for myself. So I really didn't uh, figure this out until later on when, when I had actually begun to eat meat for quite a bit. And, and then I looked back, I investigated this viewpoint that these two didn't conflate. And so what I realized after a few months of eating meat is that uh, I felt more grounded, I felt more centered in myself. My nervous system was calmed down. My body felt more nourished. All in all, I was just in a much better, better state in myself. And for that reason, I was able to really deepen my, my embodiment. That I found myself in a much more meditative state day by day, not by way of practicing, but simply by way of me being healthier, by me being in a more sustainable, nourished state of being all the time. And so, contrary to vegan belief, <laughs> I would say my spirituality actually deepened or developed even more so after introducing me, because when you don't take care of yourself, when you don't listen to your body's needs, that is not spiritual. That is self-harm. <laughs> and so, and even this whole idea of, of what it means to be spiritual, I just want to invite you to, to discard it, to set it aside, because spirituality is not about what you do necessarily. Spirituality is not about what appearance you, you obtain or carry yourself with. No, spirituality 
is not determined by anything per se because there is nothing that is not spiritual but if we want to really boil down what spirituality is it is simply the realization that Mm, we are aware presence and that we share all of us and all things we share this divine presence this aware beingness and and that is the case whether you're a meat eater or a plant-based eater or whether you eat mcdonald's every day <laughs> You can do anything. You can take drugs, you can harm yourself, you can do all sorts of things and, 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 and be spiritual still. That is not a determining factor in whether you're spiritual or not. So what I want you to investigate is really how are you treating yourself? Are you putting limitations on yourself? Are you claiming in yourself or towards somebody else that you cannot be X because you're doing Y and C? <laughs> you cannot be A because you're doing X, Y, C. Because that is not spiritual. To fence people in, to fence yourself in, to create borders, limitations and constraints. That is not what spirituality is. Because then you're creating opposition, you're creating separation, and you're basically creating a us and them sort of mentality. And I don't know how that is spiritual in any way whatsoever. So really tend to your own needs first and foremost tend to what is necessary for you in this moment to feel aligned, to feel present, to be embodied with your understanding, knowledge and wisdom. Mm. And let that be your path before anything else. And let your personal opinions, beliefs, dogmas, whatever they may be, let them be there. They're perfectly fine. You don't need to change any of that. But to simply tend to this present awareness that is here, available now. Mm. <laughs> and before I conclude this video, below in the description you'll find a link to my spiritual life coaching program. Check it out. And with that, I wish you all the absolute best. Take care. Bye.